Welcome to 13 Cubed. In this episode, we're going to take a look at some interesting scheduled task behavior based upon this article, which I helped write alongside two of my colleagues, Jonathan Sykes and Megan Bradshaw. In a nutshell, here's what we're going to do in the upcoming demo portion of the episode, which is what you're all here for, right? We'll create a new task via Task Scheduler, the GUI interface, though we could have just as easily used SHTASKS, S-C-H tasks, which is the CLI interface and we'll set the task to perform a recurring action every five minutes. We'll then pop open regedit and look at the two registry paths within which the configuration for that newly created task is stored. Then we'll delete those two paths. That's right, the keys, the sub keys, and all the values that were created when the task was instantiated, effectively removing all of the registry related configuration for the task. We'll also delete the resulting XML file, which will be created within Windows System32 tasks. At this point, all of the on-disk artifacts for the scheduled task will have been removed. Then, well, we'll see what happens. I think you might be surprised. And here we are in our Windows 10 box. And I should mention this is just a plain vanilla install of Windows 10, nothing special here. All right, let's go over to Start and run Task Scheduler. So I'll click this and start typing task, and there it is, task scheduler. So let's open that up, and I'll resize this to fit so you can see the existing tasks here. Nothing exciting at all, just the standard stuff you would find on a normal system. And now under actions, we're going to choose create task. Not create basic task, but create task, because this will allow us to specify some additional options. For the name, it doesn't really matter, but let's use something a threat actor might use, like Windows Update. All right, very good. Nothing else needs to be changed here. So for the triggers, this is going to define how often this task is going to run. So if I click new here, the local time on my machine is 8.58 a.m. So I'm going to set the first start time to 9.05 a.m., which will give us enough time to complete the rest of this demo. And then I'm going to choose repeat task every, and then for the drop down here, five minutes. So that means it should first run at 9.05 a.m., then 9.10, 9.15, so on and so forth for the duration of one day. All right, that's it, so let's click OK. Now, under Actions, what is it actually going to run? Well, we don't have anything yet, so let's minimize this and go to the desktop and create a new batch file. So I'll right-click and choose New, and then Text Document, and then we'll change this to Test.bat, and change the extension accordingly. All right, now let's edit this and put something in it. And all we're going to do is have this echo some text into a file, appending it every single time it runs. So I'll do the standard at echo off, nothing that really matters, and then echo the word testing, greater than, greater than, which will append to the file C colon users, Davis RG, desktop, test dot text. So every time this runs, it should append the word testing to the file test dot text. And that's it, super simple. All right, so let's exit this, and now let's choose that newly created batch file. So I'll click New here, and then for this actual program, we'll choose Browse, and then under Desktop, we'll choose Test.bat. And that's it. So the action is Start a Program, and the path is that Test.bat. We don't need anything else to specify here, so that's, that's all. So now the remaining two tabs, we can leave at their defaults. Nothing really needs to be changed here or here. And at this point, that's the end of the creation of the task. No big deal here. You've probably done this yourself many times. But now let's fire up regedit and take a look at the resulting registry keys, subkeys, and values that were created as a result of this task creation. So let's launch this and now bear with me because we have to drill down into a very long path. HKey local machine, software, Microsoft. Now we're going to find Windows NT, which will be way down here. And underneath Windows NT, there should only be one thing, which is current version. So let's find Windows NT first. There it is. Now, if we expand that, we should see current version. Good. Now let's scroll down and look for schedule, which should be somewhere down here. And then underneath schedule, let's find task cache. And this will contain the stuff that we're interested in. So here we go. Under schedule, under task cache. Specifically, tree and tasks are the two different paths we're going to look at. So under tree, you can see Windows Update that we just created. It was named after the task. You see that ID value there? We're actually going to end up matching up this GUID 
to the tasks key on the left side, but we'll come back to that. Let's look at SD or security descriptor. This value cannot be deleted even as a local admin. You actually have to be system to delete it. In fact, if I try, watch what happens. Now, interestingly, the malware talked about in that blog post will delete this value. And the reason why is because deleting that value will cause the scheduled task to be hidden. It will actually stop appearing in the GUI and in the Shitasks command line just by deleting the security descriptor or SD value associated with a task. So that's the first thing I'm going to call out, but we're actually not going to be doing that. We're going to take it a step further and delete everything associated with the task. First off, let's match up that GUI I just mentioned in the ID value, and you can see it right about here. And underneath there, you can see the metadata associated with the tasks. In fact, if you look at the top there, you'll see actions, and that's where the actual script being run is specified. You can actually make it out here as C users Davis RG desktop test.bat. That's what we specified when we created the task. Granted, it's in UTF 16 double wide, so you have to kind of squint to read it there, but you can make it out right there. All right, so what are we going to do with all of these values here? Well, we're actually going to end up deleting all of the stuff you see here. So let's go ahead and go over to the key here on the left side, and let's just delete the entire key and all its values. So we'll choose delete, yes, and there we go, it's gone. It just got deleted. Now let's go back down to Windows Update and check this out. Even though we can't delete the SD value, we can delete the entire tree. We can delete the entire Windows Update key and all of its values, just like that, it's gone. You just saw me delete it, which is weird. So yeah, you can't delete the value without being system, but you can delete the key that contains that and other values, so weird. All right, so now let's load up Windows Terminal. We have one last thing left to delete, and you guessed it, it's the XML that was created. So let's change into Windows System32 tasks, and we should have a Windows Update extensionless file, and there it is. That is the XML created for this task. And just to quickly take a look at it, this is just standard stuff. Every time you create a task, this kind of thing is created. You'll notice the start boundaries and the user account associated with it, Importantly, the command that's being run by the task, which you can see right there. If we scroll on up to the top, we should actually find that start time and it's right there. You can actually see the start boundary. So 9.05, just like we specified. All right, all well and good, but guess what? We're deleting it. There we go. All right, at this point, we have deleted the registry keys, sub keys and values and the XML. We have effectively cleaned up all of the on-disk artifacts or the scheduled task named Windows Update that we just created. So again, the registry stuff is deleted, the XML file on disk is deleted. So what would you expect to happen? Well, for me, I would expect it to do absolutely nothing, right? We deleted everything. Well, let's see if that holds true. So through the magic of some video editing, let's speed up time and get to 9.05 a.m., which is just about a minute from now. And look at that a file just appeared on the desktop, test.txt. And what do you think's in it? Well, of course, what's in it will be our string testing that we just created the batch file to write. There it is. So how is that possible? It must be a fluke, right? Surely it just happened once afterwards because maybe it had something to do with the timing. If I refresh this just to prove to you, that Windows Update task is gone, right? It's not in Task Scheduler. I just refreshed it, you saw it disappear. We deleted the on-disk artifacts. So how did that run? It's not in the registry. It's nowhere to be found. Let me refresh this just to show you. It's gone. Maybe it was just a fluke. Maybe it had something to do with the fact that we deleted all that stuff only a minute or two before it was scheduled to run, and it was already queued up, so it just ran it. Uh, that's an interesting theory. That's what I thought too. But, well, let's wait and see what happens at 9.10. So again, let's speed up time and see what happens. Did you see that window pop up for just a second? Interesting, it's 9, 10 a.m. Let's mouse over test.txt and see what it says. Now the modification date still shows 9.05. Let's right click on this and go to properties and see if that's really the case. And as you can see, modification says 9, 10 a.m., which is now as I'm recording this. Interesting, and if we open this up, guess what? There's a second testing 
that's been written to the file. All right, what does any of this mean? We have deleted all of the on-disk artifacts associated with the Windows Update Schedule task that we created, yet it's clearly still running. And in fact, it will continue to run indefinitely, or in our case, up until that one day boundary that we specified when we created the task. And it's going to continue to do that until one of two things happens. Either A, the system is rebooted, or B, the svchost.exe process associated with the scheduled task, which is actually still running in the background, is terminated. So you could use Procmon or a similar tool, find said svchost.exe PID, kill that PID, and then it will stop running every five minutes. But until that happens, it's going to continue to run every five minutes up until that one day boundary we specified is hit. And if we had removed that one day boundary, it would continue to run indefinitely, period, until the PID associated with that svchost.exe process is terminated or until the system reboots, even though the scheduled task doesn't even appear to exist. That's pretty crazy. So memory forensics might lend itself to discovering this. And I should also mention that if you are auditing task scheduler creation events and you're looking at the specific logs associated with task scheduler, you will still see evidence of that task running every five minutes in our case. But unless you specifically knew to look for that, you might be looking just straight up for scheduled tasks on a system, finding nothing and assuming there are none. That's pretty crazy. And don't forget too, this was just one of two methods. The previous thing that I'd also mentioned, which was deletion of the SD value, will have a similar effect in that the scheduled task will not appear in the task scheduler GUI or in the shatasks command line, but will actually still be present. So either of these methods will cause a scheduled task to in some way hide itself, yet still continue to run. Pretty crazy stuff. Make sure you take the time to read the entire blog post because there is additional information with regards to detecting this kind of activity. But I hope that seeing this in video form in addition to having the blog post was beneficial to you. As always, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next 13 Cubed episode.